for our first experiment on the podcast for this series. Yes, I am here. I'm ready. I am taking the the role of I was going to say being experimented on, but that's not quite right, isn't it? You're you're doing the experiment, uh, and putting my knowledge to the test. Yes, and I. So what I'm going to do is I've got here two jugs of water. Mm-hmm. One jug has got hot water in it and one jug has got cold water in it. Now, one of the things that he mentioned is that we have the ability to hear the difference between hot water and cold water. Okay. Okay. So I'm popping these uh, near the microphone. So we're hoping we this picks up nicely for you listeners. And what I want you to do is um, experiment along with uh, Emma. Okay. So this is jug number one. And jug number two. Now, for those of you experiment minded, same size jug, same volume of water, same type of glass. Number one or number two? Uh, which one was hotter? Was number two? Was that um, was that the making a cup of tea jug as opposed to the cold water on a yes. sunny day? Oh, phew. So the second the second one is hot water, and it makes a completely different sound as you're pouring it into the into the glass. It's amazing. Isn't it, it actually does. So why is it? Yeah. Why does boiling water sound so different? Well, there's a lot of debate about this online. Lots of debate. Um, so a lot of people think it might be to do with the viscosity, which mm. is quite a nice word. I like that word, viscosity. So um, a hot water is less viscous than cold water. So the suggestion is that this would have an impact on the sound that's being created because uh, water itself doesn't really make a sound, but it's the bubbles that are are being created inside the water as it moves around that's what generates the sound and of course having hot or cold water more or less viscous solution might have an impact on on the sounds that are being generated so it's funny actually that you're you're able to tell the difference just through sound and you know research backs it up that actually people above the age of six are able to tell the difference between hot and cold water when they're hearing it poured there was even a a study that came out in um, 2020 that 93 percent of people were accurate when they were guessing and they couldn't see like steam or anything um whether it was hot water or cold water being poured even though they often didn't think they were going to be able to they could yeah, and that's amazing, isn't it? And mm. and the fact that it's over six suggests that it's something that we learn over time. So we're listening to people making a cup of tea or, or filling a glass with water, and then we can hear the difference in tones mm. and the difference in frequencies. Um, and there was actually someone who's looked at the acoustics of this. And what they've done is that they've discovered that when you pour water into a vessel, into a glass or a cup, there's actually three main sources of sound that's happening there. So one is the resonance of the air that's left inside the container as you're filling it up with water. Mm. Um, the second one is the vibration of the container and the water. So that generates the sound as well because sound's all about vibrations. Um, and then the third one is the sounds of the water itself. And that's generated by the bubbles that are forming as you're pouring the water in. So mm. you've got those three different soundscapes. Um, and in hot water and cold water, they're, they're different. The proportions of each of those is different. So in cold water, the vibration of the container in the water, that's the dominant sound, the one that you can hear. Mm. Um, but in its, when it's hot water, it's more about the resonance of the air in the column. And of course, that might be affected by steam, I'm guessing. Mm. But, we, but that, that explains the sounds that are happening, but not necessarily why they're happening. And that's where the debate's still ongoing as we, as we record this episode. So that's really interesting. 